Hey cakers and bakers, welcome back to my channel. It's Emily Miller with my Sugar Rush and today we're gonna talk about how to stack a buttercream cake specifically for beginners. So this is what I like to call a flavor cake. A flavor cake is when the outside design of the cake matches the flavor inside of the cake. Now this is typically what you see bloggers do when they decorate their cakes. So let's get started. Online bloggers like to use corrugated boards like this that is the exact same size as their cake. So they decorate the cake directly on the board so that they're able to lift it off of their turntable, transfer it over to a cake stand, and take their beautiful photos for their blog and website. I, however, I'm not that extra. If you look at my Instagram, you'll see that I actually don't use cake stands as props like ever. It's something that I hate spending my money on. So if you wanna just simplify things, then you can also just get these corrugated boards. They're covered in like a contact paper. You can either make these yourself or you can buy these pre-made. And this one is less than $2, so not that bad. I'm gonna be decorating a six inch round cake and this is a 10 inch round board. I like to go a little bit wider on my cake board so that the edges of the cakes don't go right to the edge of the board or too close where it can easily get ruined in transit. And the nice thing about these boards is that it has a glossy finish so your grease from your buttercream won't completely ruin the board and leave a bunch of grease spots. For this cake, we're only gonna be using American frosting. Now, American frosting is not a real buttercream, but you'll hear me and a lot of other people use them interchangeably. That's okay. American frosting is butter and a ton of powdered sugar, maybe a little bit of salt, milk, and vanilla extract. It is like super sugary sweet because us Americans love our sugar. What I don't like about American is that it kind of has like a matte finish to it and it has a little bit of a grainy texture to it as well, which is not my favorite. So I've already pre-baked my cakes actually about a day ago and I use two six inch round pans that are two inches tall. Let me draw this up for you. So I like to work with only the two inch tall cake pans and this is a six inch round, which is a very common size to use for these types of cakes. So I take two of these, I bake up my cakes, I level them and then I tort them in half. So here are my two cake layers. I cut them in half this way and then I end up with four individual layers. Then you're gonna take those four individual layers, you're gonna stack them up and you're gonna do three layers of filling. These squigglies are fillings. The industry standard for cake tiers is only four inches tall. And that is usually done with the two two inch tall pans, not torted in half, and they only do one very short layer of filling in the middle. We don't want that because cake and buttercream, so delicious. So I like to add more filling to my cakes and give more value to my customers. If you struggle to stack your cake, try freezing it first. I actually never stack a cake that is not frozen because it is just so much harder to work with. I try to bake my cakes at least one day in advance. I wrap it in plastic wrap and then I stick it in the freezer overnight so that it has proper time to chill. And from there I take it out of the plastic wrap and I try to stack it immediately. This will keep your cake layers from wobbling all over the place and also your buttercream will start to solidify pretty quickly as you're stacking it before you even put it in the fridge. We're gonna take our super sugary American frosting and we're gonna add super strength cream to mint. You're going to be using mostly this leaf green, but I might add a little bit of this electric green color to the buttercream just to make it pop a little bit more. And be careful not to dump the bottle in because you don't want to overdo it with mint. Just add a little bit at a time and keep tasting your buttercream until you have it to the strength that you would like. So I'm gonna take this buttercream and I already have a bunch of crushed up Oreos right here. I'm just gonna sprinkle this in. This is after I've already mixed in the color and the flavoring to it and you just fold this in at the end and you don't wanna over mix it, otherwise it kinda of makes your buttercream look a little muddy. Look at all those beautiful specks of chocolate in there. It's just delicious. To start with, I'm gonna take some of the buttercream and I am going to add it to my cake board. You don't want it too thick, but you also don't want it too thin. If you just have like a tiny little dollop on your cake board, 
then there's really nothing gluing your cake to the board and it could easily just slide off. After you put your piping tip in, just open up your bag and flip it inside out. Pull that down. Now you're able to scoop buttercream further into the bag without gunking up the opening of your bag and just making a complete mess of things. And just pull this down as you keep adding filling and just make sure you don't overdo it because if you add too much buttercream to your bag, then you're gonna have buttercream coming out the other end. So what's awesome about these piping bags is that you don't have to keep filling them up and you're able to put a lot in at one time and keep working without having to stop every now and then. The problem with these bags is that this is too much buttercream for my hand to be able to squeeze out of the bag and have full control over the pressure. And that's even with years of experience and building up muscle. So if you fill this up quite a bit, make sure you add a bag clip to the end. I'm used to it, so I'm not adding a bag clip myself. But what you want to do is actually separate your buttercream into two sections, okay? You're going to push this buttercream back here into this back section and then you're going to have this front section here. Now I'm going to twist my bag and I'm going to continue to pinch with these two fingers and these two fingers stay put. Now what's happening is these three fingers back here, those are going to be squeezing my bag and when it squeezes the bag, it, it I'm only trying to work with this buttercream here. I'm not trying to work with all this buttercream back here. This just sits back here. And I have full control over the pressure of my piping bag. That will make things be so much easier for you, I promise. So I see a lot of videos online on Instagram where people are like chasing their cake around the turntable and you shouldn't need to do that. In fact, when you're working with this cake, your dominant hand is just going to stay put and not move. And it's your other hand that's going to turn the table and keep turning it and your cake should stay in one spot the entire time as you're just doing this. So if you have your cake off center like this, when I spin this, you can see that it is just going around the turntable and the cake is moving all over the place. So if I'm trying to scrape this, I'm gonna be doing weird things trying to chase this cake around my turntable. Center it on your turntable and just do a couple quick turns and you can see that it's perfectly centered and then you can keep moving on with your cake. When I pipe my buttercream border to keep my filling contained, what I do is I hold my piping bag straight up and down and I don't have my piping tip directly on the cake but I don't have it so far away that I have no control over it. You're just going to take this straight up and down and you're going to pipe it right above that border. And then I'm just holding this hand in place as this hand is turning my table. Now I have this beautiful border here and I'm going to scoop my filling into the cake. Okay, for my filling I just like to use small little offset spatulas. So I'm just gonna spread out my buttercream real quick first, okay? And then from here, holding this completely flat and just turning my table. And make sure when you add all of your fillings that the fillings are still staying below the borderline. If you accidentally fill it up too much, you can just add more border to it, but just make sure you're not making it so tall that your cake is just going to completely fall apart on you. And I like to use squeeze bottles, so I'm just going to squeeze ganache into this layer. I'm going to use another offset spatula and I am just going to thin out that layer and make sure that it is a perfectly even layer of ganache. What I've already done here is chopped up these mini fudge covered Oreos and I am just going to sprinkle this over the ganache in each layer, just for a little fun crunch. After you add the next layer, then just go ahead and repeat the filling process two more times.
use the cake layer that was the bottom of the cake pan. And what we're gonna do is flip that upside down and that is going to be the top of our cake. The bottom of the cake pan is a lot less crummy. So by flipping it upside down and putting that on top, that means we're gonna have less crumbs as we cover this cake layer in a crumb coat. I wanna stick this cake in the freezer. However, we have a bunch of buttercream that is sticking out quite a bit. So I'm just going to gently smooth that out and then put it in the freezer then we can keep adding layers of buttercream to this cake. Now, when I get to this part, I'm using a large offset spatula, and this is what I'm gonna use from here on out. I stopped using the small offset spatulas at this point, and I'm right-handed, so I have it in my right hand, and what I like to do is reach over the cake, and then I have my head at this like super awkward tilt, but that's okay, I'm used to it. And I can see what I'm working on and spread out the buttercream this way. Even before I initially stick this cake in the freezer to quickly solidify the buttercream, I already have a good crumb coat to this cake. That's because I worked with frozen cake and started stacking it before I had time to thaw out. Although it has already started softening up a bit, so it's not as frozen as it was when I first pulled it out, but still it's just so much easier to work with. I'm gonna stick it in the freezer for about 10 minutes, give or take, until this buttercream is no longer tacky and it's solidified a bit more, then I'm gonna keep adding layers of buttercream. Now what I recommend for beginners is having a separate crummy buttercream bowl. Because I've been doing this for years, I no longer need to have a separate crummy buttercream bowl. I'm actually able to use the one bowl the entire time. So you're not gonna see me use two bowls, but I do recommend before you're able to completely cover that crumb layer, just have a separate bowl so that you don't scrape crumbs back into your main bowl. When you're covering a cake in buttercream, you wanna make sure that you have plenty of buttercream to work with because we're going to add a bunch to the cake and we're gonna keep scraping away, then adding, scraping away, adding, scraping away, and that is how we're eventually gonna get nice sharp edges on our cake. Now I like to start with the top of the cake now I'm gonna take my large offset spatula and I'm gonna ever so gently spread out my buttercream over the top of the cake and I'm gonna purposely move the buttercream off the edges. Once I have all the buttercream spilling over the edge of the cake, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did for my filling. So I'm gonna hold my offset spatula as flat as possible and I'm just going to use this hand over here to spin the table while this hand stays completely still and I'm just going to spin, 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 and very gently push down with an even pressure on my spatula, and it's going to keep pushing the buttercream off the edges, and it's going to flatten out the top of my cake. Look at that, I've got buttercream spilling all over. Now I'm gonna take large dollops of buttercream, and I'm going to spread it on the sides of my cake, and I'm just going to keep adding a bunch of buttercream. And as I'm spreading it on the side of the cake, I am purposely pushing buttercream back up over the edge. You'll see what I mean in a second. Do you see when I added the buttercream to the sides of the cake that I've actually pushed the buttercream up over the tops and now it's sticking straight up. So I'm just going to keep adding buttercream scraping away with my bench scraper and I'm gonna keep moving the buttercream, all the extra buttercream, over the edge over and over again. That's how you get your sharp edges. Now I know you guys are gonna ask, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, this beautiful eight inch bench scraper, I buy it from uh, an Instagram account called Fat Girl Cakes. She has other sizes as well. I have a couple eight inch sizes for my classes and then I also have a 10 inch and I have a 12 inch bench scraper. Surprisingly, these larger size bench scrapers are really hard to find. What I really like about these is that she makes them super sturdy, which of course is super important, but also the handle doesn't go over the edge. A lot of bench scrapers have handles that go over the edge and you don't want that because it kind of screws you up when you're trying to use your bench scraper to smooth out the buttercream on the sides of your cake. It has a nice 
very sharp edge here so that you can get perfect 90 degree angles on your cakes as well. And I'll go ahead and drop a link for her Instagram account down below so that you can go and buy one for yourself because they are magical. So using my bench scraper, I'm gonna hold this perfectly still up against the cake and I am just going to spin my turntable as I try and keep this as straight up and down as possible at a perfect 90 degree angle. And this usually takes a couple go arounds to get it perfectly even. And what I'm going to do here is take that extra buttercream that's sticking up on the sides and I am just going to gently pull that buttercream in towards myself. What I see a lot of my students do in my classes is that they actually put too much pressure on the edge of the cake and they push down way too much and then they come up way too much when they're pulling towards themselves. And what that does is it creates like a dome on top of your cake. This part is not perfectly flat. I have it turned just a tiny bit and it's this edge down here that is perfectly horizontal. And as I'm slowly pulling the buttercream towards myself across the top of the cake about halfway, I kind of turn it up just a little bit more and pull away from the cake completely. But I have a huge lip right here and I'm just going to ever so gently scrape across the cake and pull away. And then just keep doing that. So you're probably thinking this looks great, but this is actually still my crumb coat layer. So I'm gonna stick this in the freezer for about another 10 minutes, let it completely solidify again, and I'm gonna do one more layer of buttercream on this cake, and I'm going to smooth it up perfectly. I'm gonna get rid of air bubbles, and I'm gonna sharpen up this edge even more. Now what a lot of cake decorators do when they're working with American frosting is they will actually create two different consistencies. So they'll have a thicker buttercream that they use for the filling of the cake as well as the finishing touches on the cake, but they have a thinner consistency with a little bit more milk added to the buttercream so that you can easily add the crumb coat to the cake. But using frozen cake layers and things like that really helps you to skip steps like that and having to make two different consistencies. Also, if you add too much milk to your buttercream, it will actually make your butter split and it's really hard to come back from that, if at all. So I recommend just working with frozen cake layers, working ahead of time and just working faster and you won't have to do the two different types of consistency on cakes like this. I add just enough milk to my buttercream so that it helps to take away that grainy texture that powdered sugar leaves, but I should still be able to take a large scoop of buttercream and flip it upside down without it just completely pulling away from my spatula. So you can see that this is still really workable and it's not just going to slosh all over the place and get just a complete mess. So I'm gonna repeat what I did on the crumb coat layer. So as you're smoothing out the side of your cake, you wanna make sure you're coming down here at eye level constantly. When you come down here at eye level, you can see where you need to fix some of your mistakes. What I see a lot of my students do is they don't hold the scraper with really good pressure in the middle of the scraper. Down here, your scraper is turned like this, and as you smooth it out, you're gonna to put too much pressure to the bottom of your cake and you're gonna end up with an ice cream cone shape. If you hold your scraper too high up and you're applying too much pressure to the top, then you're gonna get a pyramid shape to your cake. So apply nice, even pressure to the center of your scraper and you're just going to gently spin around your turntable and smooth it out. What I really like about using wider cake boards is that is actually where I rest the bottom of my scraper on that board and as I'm spinning around I try and keep my scraper straight up and down and that way I'm getting a nice 90 degree angle here 
What you can do is you can hold your bench scraper perfectly flat on the cake board and if you see any gaps between your scraper and the cake, then you can tell exactly where you need to fix the problem. So let's say I've scraped away way too much cake on the top and I'm starting to get like a weird pyramid shape and I hold that bench scraper to my board, I can see a little bit of a gap here on top. That way I know that I actually don't have perfectly straight lines on this cake and I need to build up the buttercream a little bit more, keep scraping it away until I fix the problem. You can see that every time I scrape buttercream off of my cake, I am scraping the extra buttercream back into my bowl and working with a clean tool. If you're not constantly scraping it off and cleaning it up, then you're just going to keep dragging the extra buttercream all over the place and you won't be able to get nice sharp lines and you're just going to end up with a messy cake. As I'm finishing up the cake, I like to do one solid swiping motion with my turntable so that I don't get ugly ridges on my cake because every time you stop the turntable, it will leave a little bit of a line of this digging into the cake. And you just wanna make sure that you're cleaning this up as nicely as possible. So I'm gonna take my bench scraper, I'm gonna take my other hand here, and I'm gonna hug my cake. I am just going to spin my turntable all the way around in one solid motion. And American Frosting is really frustrating to work with because it does like to have a lot of air bubbles. So what I like to do is I have my bench scraper here. It is getting a little bit dirty and gunky. So I run this under really hot water. And then as soon as I take it out from under the hot water, I wipe it down with a paper towel real quick and just soak up any of the extra water. But I still have a super hot blade. It will help to melt the greasy butter off of your tool. And the, the hot tool just kind of helps to melt the butter just a little bit on the outside of your cake. And that's what's smoothing it out even better than what you can do with a regular tool. After I've completely smoothed out the cake, I like to take my bench scraper and just scrape across the top as flat as possible and just try and get rid of any dome that's on the top of the cake and just make sure that it's completely flat. It just depends on how picky you wanna be. If this was a tiered cake, I would definitely do that every single time because you want your cake to not end up all wobbly. And I always come down at eye level. I'm gonna call it good from here. I'm gonna stick it back in the freezer for a couple minutes while I clean up. And just something that I like to recommend is clean up your cake board after you're done with this point and before you start decorating your cake. That will give your cake a more professional finish by having a nice clean board that doesn't have butter cream smeared all over it or anything like that. So it's already been cleaned up with a wet rag, put it in the freezer, and then we're gonna finish off this cake. And while we're waiting for the cake to finish solidifying in the freezer for a couple minutes, let's talk about ganache. So I like to use a squeeze bottle for my ganache and mine is actually a mixture of dark chocolate, milk chocolate, butter, and heavy cream, and a little bit of salt mixed in there. It is amazing. This is not a recipe that I give out personally, and I apologize for that. I know I'm teasing you guys with this. Most people just get chocolate chips from the grocery store and they add heavy cream to it to make their ganache. Chocolate chips are actually not refined as much as Coverture chocolate. It is purposely made to hold its shape in the heat of the oven, and it's just not as good quality as Coverture. So I recommend getting Coverture chocolate. The brand I use is Calibo. It's my favorite tasting chocolate out there. By adding butter to it as well, that helps to add like a nice richness to it and a little bit more flavor. And then the salt helps as well. And another reason to work with Coverture chocolate is you're gonna get thinner, pretty drips on your cake. Real Coverture chocolate have a low viscous, vis, vis, viscous, 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 
I don't know how to say it. Viscosity. I think it's viscosity. A liquid with a low viscosity, there, I got it, means that it actually is a thinner consistency typically when melted down. So when we heat up this ganache and we drip it on our cake, it's going to be super thin and it's going to drip down all nice and pretty. But if you're using cheaper compound coating, compound coating has a high viscosity and so it is a thicker consistency even when melted down to the same point as real chocolate. Also, the amount of heavy cream that you add to your ganache is going to make a difference. You don't want to over add your heavy cream so that it's thinned down too much and too little heavy cream will give you a super thick ganache, more of like a truffle type of filling. So you need to kind of play around and find a good dripping ganache to use on your cake because real chocolate has cocoa butter and cocoa butter allows it to thin out a lot more. I like to heat this up just a little bit in the microwave about three to five seconds at a time so that it's not too solidified. I already used this for the filling on the cake so it's already thinned out and not completely solidified just yet. When you reheat the ganache, the fat in your butter and or heavy cream will actually separate away from the chocolate and you won't have a nice pouring ganache to use on your cake. So every time I reheat this, I take a spatula in there and I just swish it about real nice and thick and just make sure that it is completely runny and ready to work with. So when I'm adding a ganache strip to a cake, what I like to do is use a squeeze bottle and I will squeeze the ganache right near the edge and then every now and then as I'm going along with it, I just gently push some of the ganache over the edge of the cake and I just keep doing that until I've gone all the way around the cake. Using my small offset spatula again, I'm going to take all the extra ganache that I added to the center top of the cake, and I'm just going to spread it out. And then after I've spread it out, I'm going to dig in the tip of my spatula, and I'm gonna start on the outside edge, and I'm gonna work my way to the center of the cake, just holding this completely still and spinning the cake, and then just doing a nice little circular design on the top of the cake. So before I add my buttercream border to the top of the cake, I need this ganache to set first. It's still super runny and if I try to pipe onto this, it's just going to slough off the top edge of the cake and go everywhere. So stick this back in the freezer, let it freeze for about another, maybe like three to five minutes should be good enough. And then we're gonna pipe the border and finish off the cake. Now, usually when I'm piping a border on the top of my flavor cakes, I like to use this very large close star tip. And this is also what I use for cupcakes. This is a number 848. So normally I would use this, but because this buttercream has the Oreo cookie crumble mixed into it, if you have any large chunks of cookie, it'll get caught up in the closed star and you'll actually come, your buttercream won't come out right. And I'm just gonna use the same piping tip that I used for my border, which was an 808. So I'm gonna start in the center. I'm gonna go around in a circle. I'm gonna come around to the center and I'm gonna flick away to the side of the dollop. So line it up with the other side of your cake and do your next dollop. So I think I wanna do six dollops across the top of the cake. So now I'm going to kind of eyeball it where I wanna put the next two dollops on this side. And I am just going to pick a spot that is about one third of the way through where those two dollops currently are. Thank you. 
After a pike or American frosting, the outside is going to start drying up and it's going to crust over. So if you want to add any sprinkles or cookies or anything that you want to stick to these dollops, then you want to add those immediately and don't wait. Otherwise, when you add sprinkles or cookies later, it's just going to bounce right off of the frosting. I definitely would not cover a cake in American frosting and try to cover in fondant. American frosting does like to crust over and it has like a dryness to it. So when you try to add fondant to this, it won't stick to your frosting. A lot of people actually will like spritz their cake with water or there's a couple other techniques out there what people do so that the fondant actually adheres to the American frosting but you can skip all that and just use a Swiss meringue buttercream which is way more stable to work with it's a lot better for working with tiered cakes as well and you won't eventually get your filling spilling out of the cake you can also go a little bit taller than this and add more filling because I actually make my cakes just a little bit taller than even this cake. And a cake this size, which is a six inch round, will serve about eight to 12 people, just depending on how large the cake slices are. You can refrigerate a cake for several days before serving it. I just recommend not pushing that too long. And when you go to serve it, just pull it out of the fridge, let it come to room temperature for about 30 or more minutes because cold cake actually will have a bit more of a dry texture to it, but room temperature cake will be in a lot softer and nice. I do prefer cold buttercream myself, but that is just a personal preference. So you do you. So there you have it, a perfect mint chip cake. Let me know if you have any additional questions on how to stack a buttercream cake using American frosting. While you're here, do not forget to like, but especially do not forget to subscribe for more delicious content coming your way. And while you're here, why don't you go check out some other videos? Thanks, bye.